The Celtic Twilight by William Butler Yeats. A Teller of Tales. Many of the tales in this book were told me by one Paddy Flynn, a little bright-eyed old man who lived in a leaky and one-roomed cabin in the village of Balisodar, which is, he was wont to say, the most gentle, whereby he meant fairy place, in the whole of County Sligo. Others hold it, however, but second to Drumcliff and Dromare. The first time I saw him he was cooking mushrooms for himself. The next time he was asleep under a hedge, smiling in his sleep. He was, indeed, always cheerful, though I thought I could see in his eyes, swift as the eyes of a rabbit, when they peered out of their wrinkled holes, a melancholy of which was well-nigh a portion of their joy, the visionary melancholy of purely instinctive natures, and of all animals. And yet there was much in his life to depress him, for in the triple solitude of age, eccentricity, and deafness, he went about much pestered by children. It was for this very reason, perhaps, that he ever recommended mirth and hopefulness. He was very fond, for instance, of telling how Colmkilla cheered up his mother. "'How are you today, mother?' said the saint. "'Worse,' replied the mother. "'May you be worse to-morrow,' said the saint. The next day Colmkilla came again, and exactly the same conversation took place, but on the third day the mother said, "'Better, thank God,' and the saint replied, "'May you be better to-morrow.' He was fond, too, of telling how the judge smiles at the last day alike, when he rewards the good and condemns the lost to unceasing flames. He had many strange sights to keep him cheerful or to make him sad. I asked him, had he ever seen the fairies, and got the reply, am I not annoyed with them? I asked, too, if he had ever seen the banshee. I have seen it, he said, down there by the water, batting the river with its hands. I have copied this account of Paddy Flynn, with a few verbal alterations, from a notebook which I almost filled with his tales and sayings shortly after seeing him. I look now at the notebook regretfully, for the blank pages at the end will never be filled up. Paddy Flynn is dead. A friend of mine gave him a large bottle of whiskey, and though a sober man at most times, the sight of so much liquor filled him with a great enthusiasm and he lived upon it for some days, and then died. His body, worn out with old age and hard times, could not bear the drink as in his young days. He was a great teller of tales, and, unlike our common romancers, knew how to empty heaven, hell, and purgatory, fairyland, and earth to people his stories. He did not live in a shrunken world, but knew of no less ample circumstance than did Homer himself. Perhaps the Gaelic people shall by his like bring back again the ancient simplicity and amplitude of imagination. What is literature but the expression of moods by the vehicle of symbol and incident? And are there not moods which need heaven, hell, purgatory, and fairyland for their expression, no less than this dilapidated earth? Nay, are there not moods which shall find no expression unless there be men who dare to mix heaven, hell, purgatory, and fairyland together, or even to set the heads of beasts to the bodies of men, or to thrust the souls of men into the heart of rocks. Let us go forth, the teller of tales, and seize whatever prey the heart longs for, and have no fear, everything exists, everything is true, and the earth is only a little dust under our feet. End of A Teller of Tales